Hey game developers, it's me, Titan Hex, and I'm back with an awesome tutorial and I'm excited. We're gonna be getting into eventing really soon here. I'm glad you've made it this far. Hopefully you've learned something new. I've taught you something you didn't know. You're ready for the next part after this. So we're gonna start on the system, jump to the types, and then learn terms. So this is all part of the database. It should be simple, we'll get it done, we'll get it set, and uh, we're gonna start right now. So let's go ahead and check out the starting party up here in the top left. That's your starting, like the, the members in your team when you first start the game. If you leave it blank, you won't have any party members. Um, you can have it so that the game's just like a lot simpler that way. Um, maybe you want an introduction and you don't want to add characters until the introduction's finished. You can also start transparent. And that also does the same thing. It makes your character invisible. So that if you have an awesome opening with some scenes, some text, some some uh, pictures coming by or movie or anything like that, your character won't show up until you turn transparency back on. Great way to make the game uh, a little, and have a nice intro in case you don't have a plugin that allows you to have an intro. So the next big part is, let's see, setting up a, the actor party. I'm going to do that real fast. And a fourth. There. Nice simple thing right there. Uh, we also have the vehicle images and the game title. So you can retitle your game if you'd like. Uh, that's done right here. Simple and easy. It'll be, uh, the main reason you would want to set this up is because it changes the title drawn on the, um, the opening screen. And if you don't want any title drawn using their text editor, you just click that and you can just put your own picture of uh, your titles, your name of your game, or whatever you need. Um, so next is you can set the images for boats. It can be whatever you want. You can set it for ship and airship, and we'll get into those when we start looking at the uh, boat, ship, and airship properties. So this is your currency. Uh, in the bottom left of your menu, it'll show how much gold you have. You can change it to G or coin or whatever, <laughs> whatever you like. It's up to you. Next are the window color. Let's see, this is basically the color of the window when you um, are going through menus and stuff like that. You can change it using this little scroller. Um, there's, there's a few options. Um, unfortunately, in the old RPG makers, you were able to choose your own sort of layout. In this one, you have to just kind of go with what they have. It's probably better that way because of the changes in resource sizes, but you can change the window color at least through here. And I'm sure a plugin exists that allows you to have visual windows, uh, just your own layout. So next we're going to check out these options. Use side view battle. If you want a front view battle, um, this is this is the one to keep unchecked. But if you want the side view, click it. The only difference between the front view and the side view is the side view is a lot more work and it looks better. It has more polish. Um, it's, it's, it takes a lot more work though. Uh, the only, and the only difference isn't really in the gameplay. It's just how it's visually represented. That's, that's all it is. So you can check or uncheck that as well as show player followers. That's your caterpillar thing. Uh, caterpillar thing I talked about in an earlier one where the characters follow the player that are in the party. Knockout by slip damage. So slip damage is what they call the poison damage and stuff like that, anything that, that makes you take damage over time has a potential to kill you. This is the thing you check. Usually this is for the map, the mini map, not for the, uh, or for the map, not for the battle. So if you check this, uh, when you take too many steps, you might die from poison. Same with floor damage. If you're stepping on floors and you're taking damage, uh, we took, went over floor damage in the tile sets right over here. Uh, but if you're taking floor damage, knockout by floor damage will allow it to kill you. Display TP in battle is obviously your TP gauge in when you're, you're battling. Uh, if you don't want to use TP or and you don't want a TP system in your game, click this and turn it off. EXP for reserve members. So if you have like a ton of 
characters um, and you want to make sure they get experience when you're not using them click that and you'll get exp for them next is the side view magic skills if the player is using some sort of magic and and it's using the magic animation for it um, this is the one that you want to make sure it's in the category so if you want it to look like they had, you want them to use the casting animation when they're using this spell category you want to make sure you put it in here next we're going to jump to the starting position so you can set whatever map you want the player to start in um, you can also do that from the map editor by right clicking and we're going to go over that sometime later during mapping as well as eventing uh, boat ship and airship where you want the, those to first be found that's right here and you can set these now boats usually work in the shallow water which would be something like it's usually this tile a, the a1 top left tile then you have deep water which is this tile right here which would be the a1 second tile uh, that one's usually considered the deep water and the, it, it keeps that theme for the most part anything that's usually inside it doesn't uh, but for the most part it generally keeps that actually hmm, it might keep it for all of them but either way just good to know um, boat only works in shallow water ship only works in or works in deep and shallow and then you have airship which goes everywhere and you can set where those start now the title screen is pretty cool they don't have a lot of options but these are a border and this is a picture that goes behind the border um, you can do neat little things uh, playing with this to come up with a nice cool title screen they have some presets for you so keep that in mind next is the attack motions and menu commands so if you don't want certain menu commands to come up you just uncheck them here and they won't show up in the menu uh, this is for your initial game you cannot turn some of these on and off next we have bare hands dagger sword flail etc these are your animations uh, so it's the side view attack motions this determines which one it uses now there's three different ones and each of those when we go through the animation sheets for the side view battlers these are the animations it's referencing so it, it would be referencing the motion and then it would you can choose an image so they have their own setup and then some user defined ones it's it's pretty limited to be honest with you it's it's nice to get a plugin that expands on these so it's smart to kind of find those then you have the um, music this is your default music that will play for a whole bunch of different scenarios they all they have set up here game overs defeats victories all that set up here sounds those are your sound effects for menus weapon or for battles and menus and they're all right here so it's good to be able to change this and there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, plugins mainly that, that expand on these options so next we'll jump over to types now types are classifications in your game they allow you to do a whole bunch of things especially with the equipping system and the traits we'll jump right into elements now elements usually come with uh, traits usually found in actors classes and enemies you can choose the element rate so how much damage a person or enemy takes from a different type of magic yeah different type of element and you can choose which elements those are and you can always assign elements to weapons as well so that's the awesome part of the element system here there's some cool stuff you can do you can even add some like uh, psychic or blood or something like that Psychic. so cool little stuff like that uh, next is the skill types and when you go into your menu and then go into skills it'll show different categories these are your categories magic special etc um, your you can expand on the skill types maybe you want more than just one or two so maybe uh, magic can have priest and uh, or maybe you can reclassify magic as fire, ice, and water. Well, fire, ice, and uh, wind. Maybe earth. So you can throw those around, and then under your skills menu, they'll be they'll be listed there if the 
class or actor has that um, set. So add skill type, fire, ice, wind. So you can set all that stuff up for your game and choose who has access to those. So maybe a weapon gives you a fire skill, but unless you have the fire um, magic type, you can't use that fire skill. So you could have a cool little thing like that where certain weapons uh, will be more effective on certain allies and stuff like that. Next is weapon types. This is going to be your general uh, setup for weapons. <laughs> the different categories are all listed here and you with the side view battler it's going to determine some of the stuff and it is also determined by uh, classes and traits. Uh, so if I go to class traits, actor traits, um, I can choose who can equip what kind of weapons and have a nice one, uh, a typical RPG where certain only certain classes can equip certain items and stuff like that. Same with the armor types. I can, I can set those up so only certain characters can equip certain armors. Um, next is equipment types. So this is kind of the slots of your inventory. Um, when you're equipping things to your character, these are the slots that you can equip them to. It's that's that's really about it. It's the slots you can equip items to. Uh, very useful. You can set up a whole bunch of different things. The only thing is, if you wanted two accessory slots like I had, you would need a plugin that allows you to choose to be able to equip the same accessory to both slots. Now, unfortunately, that's just the way they set it up. So this unfortunately would not work because I would have to go into armors and I'd have to designate which accessory slot it's going into and it doesn't do both. It's, it's very unfortunate. So, uh, but that's just the way it works. And you can find a plugin that, that expands on that. So now that we have gone through the types, we're going to finish up with terms and this part should be quick and easy. Uh, it's almost self-explanatory, but you have your, your, terms used for all this uh, parameters you can change those so it doesn't say HP it says MP or you can say health and you can change it to H attack can be attack uh, defense etc oh wait that's MP so mana health and mana you can have something like that and then you can change the abbreviation from HP to H and M for that Neat little stuff like that you can do with this. Uh, commands, these are your skill commands, uh, weapon commands, stuff like that. Um, fight command, your your attack command, stuff like that. Um, it's all set right here. And you can change it around however you want. It's found in menus in the battle menu. Uh, same with these, these are your general um, equipment categories. Well, wait, hold on, weapon. Uh, it, it tells you that uh, it doesn't tell you a lot, but it tells you that these are for commands. So when equipping certain items, like if I want to equip weapons to my character, I want to equip armor, I can change this uh, to a different term. Optimize, clear, buy, sell, all that's right here. Uh, easy to change. Next we have messages. And there's a whole bunch of different messages you can change. These are these range from a whole bunch of different scenarios that happen, uh, menus and things like that. And this little percent one means that there's uh, the game has saved some data, and then it uses it checks that data and then puts that name there where that percent one is. So it'll save the skill that you just learned uh, into this little uh, what is called a variable, and we're going to learn more about those in inventing. So it saves it into a variable and then displays it for you. Um, it's very neat, very useful. Uh, it's just, it helps it be more dynamic. And that's, that's actually pretty much it. So this has been the systems types and terms. Hopefully you've learned all that you could and you're ready to jump from the beginner tutorials into the more intermediate, uh, beginner tutorial, intermediate, uh, earlier stages. So I think you guys are ready. If you've gone through the videos or if you really feel like you know your stuff and you want to learn some eventing we're going to start doing that and it's going to be awesome you're going to learn quick i promise i have an awesome way of teaching switches and variables that most people ignore um and it's it's unfortunate and you're going to really learn a lot though so thank you again for tuning in learning some more about rpg maker and getting ready to make 
the game that you've always wanted to. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Helps me out. Helps me uh, know more about what game you're working on or what you want to, for a tutorial, what you want to see made. Just let me know. And maybe if you need help, just ask if I can't, well, if I am not available to help you, or if I, I'm too busy to help you, somebody else in the comments can. And that, that's really a great thing. So again, thank you. And I will see you in the next tutorial.